Zechariah Sitchin, the Anunnaki gods are back. Anunnaki or alien gods have been mentioned more and more often in various conspiracy theories, being brought to light by Zechariah Sitchin's bestseller. Genesis Revisited, in his book, Sitchin did extensive research on ancient mythology, and studied the megalithic ruins left behind by various civilizations. In his books, Sitchin wants to show that this alien race has genetically altered humans for several reasons. Sitchin's theory has gained many followers, who have further developed it. Finding evidence of the existence of these aliens around the world, both past and present. The theory is based on the Sumerian Babylonian gods, the Anunnaki, as aliens from the 12th planet Nubiru. Although the theory of extraterrestrial gods sounds like science fiction, the transformation of gods into beings and vice versa is a psychological phenomenon of humans that has been observed and recounted since the time of the ancient Greek philosophers and is called Eomerism after the Greek philosopher Eomeros 300 BC. Eomerianism states that the gods were in fact kings, queens, heroes, whose deeds were transformed into stories and legends, often with great deviations from reality. So the Anunnaki theory is in fact an Eomerism of our times that seeks to explain the miraculous phenomena of ancient legends through advanced technologies of an alien race. The Astronaut Theory of Antiquity Researcher Charles Fort has devoted his entire life to the study of various ancient texts, drawings, and constructions, and has identified a number of anomalies and mysteries contrary to perceptions of reality, whether scientific or religious. In an attempt to explain these anomalies of history, a large number of writers have come up with different theories. One of these theories is that of the ancient astronaut created by the Swiss writer Eric von Daniken. At first the theory was ridiculed but later it found followers like Zecharia Sitchin. The theory is based on a Sumerian drawing with a figure that resembles a modern astronaut. Due to the fact that Sitchin was one of the few researchers who understood and deciphered Sumerian writing, the theory gained credibility for many of Sitchin's followers. Creating the Anunnaki legend Zechariah Sitchin tries to distort reality, to interpret the customs and customs of the ancient Sumerians for the benefit of his theory. In reality, however, there is no need to create these interpretations because even the Sumerians said that their gods are planets and not humans. And their stories are myths that contain characters who interpret these celestial bodies. A landmark work in ancient mythology is Western mythology written by Joseph Campbell who after extensive research states in his work that biblical phenomena such as the exodus of Moses are mere legends, and in terms of Greek, Germanic or Celtic mythology, even they said, as did the Sumerians, that events are stories and that the characters only interpret certain beliefs. Certainly ancient mythology is not as interesting as the possibility that in the past an alien species may have interacted with the human species, hence the growing interest in this theory. The Astral Faith of the Ancients In ancient times, people were not as stupid and naive as they are in many materials, but even surprisingly advanced. Over the course of decades, they had developed a complex astronomical system in which they tracked the movement of various celestial bodies. These astral observations were developed by all ancient civilizations. Life itself has been ordered according to the movements of the stars, according to the rotational motion of the Earth, the motion of the Moon in relation to the Earth, or the motion of the Moon in relation to the Sun. Based on these astral observations, agriculture and navigation developed. Since humans were addicted to agriculture, it is not surprising that they came to worship the stars with which they knew when to sow and when to reap. What Sitchin does is just interpret these legends in order to create an interesting story. Which is not at all to the benefit of these people who in the past with their knowledge have managed to push civilization forward. For example, the Sumerians referred to the Anunnaki as the guardians of the seven gates through which the son of the Lord had to pass into the afterlife. The Anunnaki were also the spirits of the earth. There is no point in interpreting a legend that from the beginning did not want to be a legend. Humans in the past were simply not so naive as to confuse a planet with a human and vice versa. 
Sumerian culture did not appear suddenly but developed slowly, gradually. Many discoveries have been made about this civilization. One of the most important being the city of Yore which was discovered in the mid-19th century. But the culture has not disappeared, it has slowly transformed. Only the original writings and beliefs have been forgotten. From the cuneiform texts found, it is known that the Sumerian gods 3,500 years ago were in Lil, Elil, Utu, Shamash, Marduk, Meridak, Gilgamesh, Nana, Sin, Anana, Ishtar, Ea, Enki, Dumuzi, Tammuz. Some of these deities are mentioned among the so-called Anunnaki or Agigi. Anunnaki deities are said to be 7, 50 or 900. But none of these characters are historical figures, because as I said before, even the Sumerian Babylonians said of them that they represented the planets. Then the planets included the sun and the moon. The Catholic Encyclopedia says of Babel that the step tower of Beers Nimrod had seven colored platforms in seven colors, black, white, yellow, blue, red, silver, and gold, and worshipped in the same order the astral gods Adar, Saturn, Ishtar, Venus, Meridak, Jupiter, Nebo, Mercury, Nergal, Mars, Sin, Lunan, Shamash, Sun, Enlil, Elil, Bel. King Anunnaki, Enlil, is the god of storm and wind, also known as Bel or Baal in some biblical texts that attribute it to the sun god in Canaan. Enlil and Ninlil gave birth to the god Nana, who represents the moon, a very important deity of the Sumerians, known as Sin to the Babylonians. Sin is also mentioned in the Bible where it is said that it was the deity worshipped in Yor and Haran. However, it is obvious that neither Sin nor his parents are real or alien persons. Sin, Shamash, the god who represents the moon, Sin, is the father of Smash. The Babylonian god who represents the sun, revered in the past by the Israelites. Sun in Hebrew means Shamash. The sun god Shamash was called the sublime judge of the Anunnaki. Enki, Ea, the son of Enki, Ea was the commander of the Anunnaki or god of the waters, named Marduk, Meridak or Mordecai in the biblical book Ishtar. Marduk is also mentioned as King Agigi. Marduk was the supreme god of the Babylonians and represented the planet Jupiter, although in some later texts he is referred to as Bel Marduk and also embodies the sun god. One of Marduk's fifty names is Nibiru or Nebiru which may resemble the Egyptian term Neb Heru meaning sun god. In Egypt, this god Heru is represented as a falcon with open wings and a sphere on its head, which represents the sun. Instead of representing the twelfth planet mentioned by Sitchin, he refers to Nibiru or personified Nebo as a hero representing the sun, and is similar to Moses in the Bible. Nibiru is often drawn as a winged disc. As for the twelfth planet, astronomers have not been able to find it to date, so it most likely does not exist. Gilgamesh. The demigod Gilgamesh is depicted as fighting the astral bull, and is often found in Persians as the god Mithra, depicted killing a bull. Gilgamesh is somewhat similar to the Greek demigod Hercules. As he, like Hercules, goes through a host of heroic adventures described in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Anana, Ishtar, the goddess Anana is attributed to the planet Venus, the constellation Virgo. Sometimes the moon or even the earth. The Babylonians said that he was one of the seven who decided the fate. There are similarities with the Greek deity Hades, the god of the afterlife, who allowed Persephone to go out into the world again to create spring. Anana allowed the god Dumuzi, Tammuz to stay in the world beyond only six months a year to create the seasons summer and winter. Dumuzi, Tammuz. One of the last Anunnaki was the god Pastor Tammuz, who was also worshipped in Jerusalem according to the book of Ezekiel. In Babylonia, Tammuz is referred to as being inside the garden of Adina or Eridu. Here grew a black vine. It was a wonderful place, right next to the abyss. In the wonderful house, which is like a forest with many shadows, no man ventures in the middle of it. In the middle of it is the god Tammuz. Between the mouths of evil on both sides.
The seventh hell. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Anunnaki appear as follows. The Flood. Nergal demolishes the dams of the lower waters. Ninurta the king of war has removed the dams and the seven judges of hell, the Anunnaki, with their cakes, set fire to the earth with live fire. The waters below are heaven. And the Anunnaki were the judges of the fate of the earth and the bearers of light in the night sky. They are also referred to as the lower seven spheres as Barbara Walker relates in the woman's encyclopedia of myths and secrets. The seven exorcised devils of Mary Magdalene appear to have been the seven Maskimi or Anunnaki, Sumerian Akkadian spirits of the lower seven spheres, born of the goddess Mari. An Akkadian tablet said of them that there are seven. There are seven in the depths of the ocean. There are seven in heaven. Walker also says in the Woman's Dictionary of Symbols and Sacred Objects. The universe was perceived in antiquity as a set of crystal domes, stacked on top of each other, and the earth was in the middle of these domes. This system was designed to explain how the stars remained fixed as the planets moved relative to the earth. The spheres were from the inside to the outside, correlated with the days of the week. The sphere of the moon, the sphere of Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn and the sphere of the sun. The last sphere, the eighth, was the highest heaven and the house of the supreme god. Corollary to this theory, it was also believed that there were seven spheres inside the earth, the seven hells, to which the traveler Dumuzi and Anana, Tammuz and Ishtar, traveled. The seven gates of the seven hells were guarded by the seven Anunnaki or Maskam, the counterparts of the planetary spirits. According to an Akkadian magic tablet, they set out from the depths of the ocean, from the most hidden places. Early Christians believed that human souls descended from the highest heavens. Taking a sin from each of the seven spheres they encountered, desire from Venus, anger from Mars, and so on. After death, if the soul were Christianized, it was believed that it would leave all its sins in the seven planetary spheres to eventually reach back to the highest heaven. The ancients therefore believed that the Anunnaki were the opposite image of the seven planetary spheres, the lower seven spheres the mirror image of the seven planets. This motif of the seven judges is also found in Slavic mythology, where they are clearly identified with the planets. Anunnaki is a generic term for gods, especially demigods, and could be translated as gods of heaven and earth. An or Anu means heaven and represents the god of the sky, and Ki means earth, and can be interpreted as the god of the earth. Conclusion. In reality, mythology should not be taken as a historical document. It is clear that the ancients who created these myths actually knew the universe and its laws much better. Moreover, the architecture, art, writing, and traditions of these ancient Sumerian, Babylonian, Indian, Egyptian, Chaldean, Phoenician, and Canaanite cultures show an even higher degree of development than those that followed them. In terms of cosmic knowledge, it can be said that man has regressed. As he has interpreted and still interprets ancient myths as true facts. It is clear that all religions were based on the worship of the planets and especially the sun. Even the most widespread faith today, Christianity, is based on these ancient beliefs. No one knows what the Sumerians were thinking when they wrote about the Anunnaki. On the one hand, historians contradict theories about ancient aliens. On the other hand, adherents of this theory do not believe that it was possible that these extinct civilizations had such advanced knowledge without outside help. Perhaps the mysteries of the Anunnaki have nothing to do with aliens, but only a lack of information about ancient cultures. What little we know about Sumer comes from clay tablets, written in a language that no one speaks today. To find out more, archaeologists need to decipher as many writings from that period as possible. So we can only wait for the linguists to work.